G'day guys, Mike here from Karimia Cottage. Today we're going to go and uh, hunt down some Queensland arrowroot or Canna edulis. As you can see here, the Canna edulis has been set in here for a very long time. You can see the arrowroot there, the bulbs in the ground ready. Now the plants are laying over now, it seems to show that these plants are ready for uh, harvest and also uh, ready to separate themselves and shoot up more plants. Now to harvest the plants, all we've got to do is find the join in between the tubers and the plant itself, put the shovel down and then harvest it. Now it has been said that you can eat these like potatoes, but we've tried it and they taste pretty crappy. But they do make great arrowroot starch, which is excellent thickener for cooking, uh, for cooking and thickening up gravies and soups and stews and everything like that. Now these are the young tubers on the plants and these are what we break up and run, rinse the water through and obtain the starch from. Okay, and with the remainder of the leaves that we've got left over from the garden bed, we just chop them up and uh, get them ready to drop in another garden bed just to re-fertilise. And that way we've got the circle of life happening all through the garden. Okay, once we get our arrowroot all picked and in the bucket and the root snipped off, and we've got to give it a bit of a wash before we take it inside. So we like to do this in front of the front garden so we can use the water and give the cassava behind us a little bit more of a uh, water as well. So we have some pieces of arrowroot here. There's a bit of older cranky a bit, but this bit should be okay. But the younger ones are a lot better. And this is the crappy inside of some of the older, uh, older arrowroots. Uh, it's a little bit cranky and it's starting to split up as well. So this is why we don't use these ones and we return them back to the mulch for the garden. Now arrowroot, when you are chopping it, oxidizes very, very quickly. So it's best, once you do this, to get it into water as soon as you can. Now this is what your arrowroot looks like once it's peeled. And here we have the arrowroot in the water. Ready. Now we've got an absolute bucket load of bloody um, arrowroot from the garden. So we've got it all here in the pots, all ready to go. So now. Okay, now for the fun bit. We get to chop all of these up and chuck them in the Thermomix. It's just like chopping taters for mashed potatoes. So you cut them up, you just don't want the big buggers slapping around in your Thermomix and wrecking it. Second should be about right. There we go, all lovely and mulched up and ready to release all of that arrowroot powder. Okay, we just scrape our pulp out of the Thermomix 
and into the strainer which I've lined with a cheesecloth. So this will catch most of the pulp but it will let all of the arrowroot uh, powder fall through. You'll notice how the uh, pulp oxidizes as well. So we tip the water through there and work it through the cloth and we can see it mixing in down the bottom. Okay, now just to uh, get the remainder of the uh, arrowroot flour out of the arrowroot, we just pick up the sides of the cloth, hold it up and give it a squeeze. This will just get all of the water and the last of the starch out of that flour. And here you're left with the dried arrowroot pulp. What we do with that, you don't have to do this, but what we do with that is we dehydrate that and make a secondary arrowroot flour out of it, which is great for making patties, burgers, anything like that that needs a thickener or a uh, flour. This is what we use to dehydrate stuff. This is our BioChef dehydrator. It does a ton of work around the place. So it's got nine trays. Um, so when we dehydrate, we put it in there, a couple of different sheets. Yeah, this is our pulp. It's in the cloth, ready to, um, re uh, and already been squeezed out. So we take it out of the cloth, and this is how we dehydrate the arrowroot um, pulp itself and make a flour. So you get the pulp from the cloth, from the squeeze out, spread it out on your tray. You can see. So we just spread that out on the, uh, on the dehydrator tray. This tray will probably take a bit more, so I'll wait until we've got some more in there. Then we can put that on the tray. Then we put this into the dehydrator, along with the other one we did earlier on, and wait till we fill up the dehydrator, and then it'll be good. To when we put it in the dehydrator, we put it on uh, 70 degrees Celsius and for around about 10 hours. So that Hey, 10 hours has magically passed and we've got our dehydrator here and we're about to take out the arrowroot pulp and have a look and see how it goes. So you can see the pulp here is all dried out. It's nice and light and still a little bit fibrousy. So with it being dried here, we're going to put it into the Thermomix and um, mulch it down into a flour. Again, if you don't have a Thermomix, you can use a, a bullet or a blender or any sort of machine that will crush your flour down into a powder. And you can also see on the bench as we're doing this, we've still got the standing bowls there with the starch settling out. Okay, we try and store all of our gear in uh, glass jars. These are actually Makona coffee jars and uh, you'll find different people around the place will uh, have a heap of different jars around that they'll be quite willing to share with you or offload so they don't have to deal with them. We also use to, to fill the jars uh, this little nice uh, jam filler. It's uh, from a mob called Kilner. Um, we got it from... Uh, green harvest when we went there to visit for some seeds they had some interesting uh, contraptions and bits and pieces so uh, we wouldn't have been without it now because uh, we use it for just about everything I'll just be careful and not get it all over the floor And there we have some actual arrowroot flour. And now it comes time for the arrowroot starch. As you can see, the starch in this bowl has all settled down to the base. And we're just left with the oxidised water on top. 
So what we'll do is we'll just pour out this water into the sink. The starch will stay in the base. But there may... You can see the starch there. So I'll just put a bit of clean water in there, rinse that off, and then we'll get the starch out onto a baking sheet. Now when you've got your starch ready to go in the bottom of your bowls, you put them on the dehydrator trays, um, usually onto a uh, plastic tray that has no holes in it because the starch does have water in it and it is very fine. Uh, if you don't have a plastic uh, cover for your dehydrator trays, we just use some GLAD compostable brown paper, um, baking paper, that just sits on the trays and you can uh, use anything on the on top of that and it goes very well for any manner of things that you want to dehydrate. So at the starch, you'll notice if you press on it, it becomes solid. But if you let it drip, it becomes liquid. So press, becomes solid. You just let it go, it becomes liquid. If there is still a little bit of brown left on your starch as you tip it out, most of that will just tip off um, with the liquid that's still in the starch. And now we get these uh, trays, put them in the dehydrator and put them on 70 degrees Celsius for about 10 hours again. And here we have the final result of the arrowroot flour out of the dehydrator. What we do now, we just lift up the arrowroot flour off the drying tray. And give it a quick run in the Nutribullet just to powder it all up. And then we've got our very own arrowroot starch doing cooking with. And that's how you use Queensland arrowroot at home and how you make Queensland arrowroot at home. And thanks for watching guys. We hope this has uh, given you an idea on uh, Queensland arrowroot, what to do with it, how to grow it and how to prepare it. This is just our way of creating a more sustainable lifestyle and living within our means. Remember, the best place to find a helping hand is at the end of your arm. So go and dig some dirt, make something and just have a go. Uh, can you, if, uh, if you'd like to any, uh, leave any comments or questions, please leave them below and we'll get back to you as quick as we can. And please, we'd really like it if you could like and subscribe to our video channel just to see any more videos that we have coming up. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.